Welcome to this Stateless Codecast. This is episode number nine in our series, Getting Started with Rails 7. And in this episode, we're going to work on updating an existing article. So as the, uh, the Rails guide that we're going through and have been going through for all of the other episodes on this series indicates, we've already covered the C and R of CRUD, Create, Read, Update, update Destroy. We did it in the opposite order, so it was really more like urcud, but um, that doesn't produce as intre- as good of an acronym. So we've uh, now going to move on to the update portion of this, and the guide notes that updating is very similar to creating uh, both multiple step processes. You initialize the article, you take a form action on it, and then you send that form response back and um, take action to um, manipulate the database with those values. So we're going to continue on in our uh, the way that we've been doing this is via test driven development. So we're going to start by um, dealing with our articles controller test and um, writing tests for uh, should get edit, should update article, and then should display our errors um, if validations fail. Uh, we'll have to modify this uh, test name so that it distinguishes between create and update, but that's kind of what we'll do here. So I'm going to start by uh, pasting in the code for should get new and um, should get edit and should update article. And then we'll look at that, we'll do our um, manipulations to the controller and, and views in order to make these pass and then we'll look at refactoring some of these. So we'll pause and add in the code for edit and update. All right so let's take a look at what's different in our edit and update tests here. So I went back and on line 54 change uh, should display errors if create validations fail. So before it was just validations fail. And then if we look at get edit, it's similar, very similar to what we have for new. So get new article URL, you can note that new article URL does not have a parameter, uh, edit does. So edit article URL with the article uh, instance variable that we've got as the parameter. And then the assertions are going to be the same with the exception of uh, new article versus edit article in the uh, the H1. And we'll see the, um, the repetitions of that um, affecting things as we go further into the uh, this episode and the, uh, the guide section on updating and partials. The next one is should update article. So you can see, and we'll deal with this later in the episode, the, uh, we've got some opportunity to uh, refactor some repeated code out into instance variables in the setup block, but I'm gonna leave refactoring um, out of scope for at least this portion of the episode. The main thing that you'll see is that there's no longer in assert difference and assert no difference. And then in our action here, instead of doing post articles URL, we're doing uh, patch article URL article. Uh, and our parameters are, uh, we've added in the ID being the article's ID. And then the, um, the article uh, part of the, the hash with the nested attributes is still the same. After it completes, we'll reload the article, um, assert that we're redirected to the article path of that article, that the article title matches our reload our uh, updated article's title, same with the body. And then another difference is just in the, the flash uh, message here, article was successfully updated instead of created. In our unhappy path, very similar again, but we're not doing the assert no difference um, we are patching to the article URL. We still have the article ID, but in this case, like we did in create, 
we've got the uh, empty string for title and body. And then we're doing uh, assertions about edit article, uh, that there's a form being displayed, and that we have three div dot errors, and that we have one for blank title, blank body, and body too short. So that is what we're aiming on getting passing in this episode. I'll save this and run what we've got right now. And you see we've got um, three errors, each of them so uh, related to the action could not be found in the articles controller. So we'll, similar to how we've gone before, we will um, add those in from the um, from the guide. So now we'll have, um, in, in, let's take a look at this code. So article uh, dot find params ID at uh, the beginning of both of these. So similar to new where we're article equals article dot new. In this case, we're finding an existing article and displaying that and sending it to the, uh, to the view. And then for the update, when the action, remember the, um, from a request re response standpoint, this is stateless from browser to server and server to browser. So at the beginning of the update action, we need to find the article in the database, instantiate that into the uh, article instance variable, and then attempt to update the article with the article params, strong parameters that we did, I think two episodes ago in our create a new actions. And then very similar, if we um, successfully update, we redirect to the article, we'll add in the flash notice when we get to that point in failing our tests. And then if it doesn't work, we'll render the edit action with unprocessable entity, very similar to what we did with new. So we'll get that into our controller here and see what new errors that gives us. So we're up to one failure and two errors. So uh, for successful update, we're still failing. We made it all the way down to the flash on that one. So um, article was successfully updated. And then if it fails, nil. So that's our happy path here should update article. It's making it all the way down here to line 96 before that last assertion about our flash notice fails. And we still have um, no, no template errors for the, um, the get edit and the, um, the unhappy path with, with bad uh, parameters. So it's trying to render it and it can't do so. So that means we're getting to the right spot with that validation. It's just, we don't have the edit.html.erb yet in our application. And so uh, we'll start out, we'll, we'll create the empty edit.html.erb and then we'll work on getting the forms, the form into a partial here. So we'll go to our views, articles, so we've got now an empty view file. This should get us to failures on those two errors that we had, and that tracks with what we want. So we are in both cases looking for an H1 matching um, edit article. So we'll get that. Save that. We should now make it a little farther down our failures. 
So we're now looking for the form and we are unable to find it. So that's uh, where we'll go next on uh, partials. So we'll now get to the section here. So using partials to share view code, um, the the form here you can see is going to be very similar and we would essentially just be copying and pasting the same code from new.html.erb to edit.html.erb. And I'll actually do that and see if it makes our, our test pass before we start refactoring it out. down to one failure. So the only thing that's failing now is that article successfully updated in the flash. We will get that passing before we start refactoring out into the um, form, form HTML.erb partial so that we can know that we've got um, passing tests. Um, and if we make a mistake refactoring that out, we'll, our, our tests will start failing. So we'll go into articles controller redirect to article, notice article was successfully updated, and we are back to fully passing in our, um, in our suite here. So now we're going to follow through and take this um, what we've got duplicated in edit.html.erb and new.html.erb and we're going to refactor them out into a partial. So you can see here uh, we're taking this and we're going to take um, a new file called apps views articles underscore form.html.erb and it's going to have the contents that we had from um, either one of these with the the big change and really the only change is that the instance variable article so at sign article is being replaced with article just a local variable um, because it's shared code it's note here be best practice to not depend on specific instance variables so what you'll do is we can see here um, render form you note that by the Rails convention, the underscore form here, uh, it does not appear here. So the it under, Rails framework understands the partial there. So, uh, and then that second parameter, you're uh, specifying the local variables that you're sending to that form. So article is going to be that instance variable that you have of article. And this is what we were just talking about with regard to the um, the prefixing with an underscore for partials and using render form without the underscore and this is what edit is going to look like so they're both going to have render form with the article local variable variable being passed as the article instance variable that we set in the controller and then the difference between the two will be new article versus edit article and then the rest of it will be the form that we're refactoring out so we we did add a class to those two divs so we need to make sure when we take this into the form dot html dot erb partial that we don't forget to have that class equals error in those two error messages so We've got articles here, create a new file, underscore form.html.erb. We will have class equals error in those divs. And then Everything else should still work fine. And then we're going to take out the, uh, the form part there and replace it with render form. So render form article is your article.
and that'll be the same for both edit and new and our tests are still passing so you think about when we had the the code duplicated just straight up copied and pasted uh, that's you're doubling the that 21 lines of code that you've got for, uh, allocated to the form you're doing that twice and in the event that you change something you want to add something to the form that's two places you have to maintain identical code if you don't refactor it out and use a partial um, using the the principle don't dry don't repeat yourself here so that's what we're um, doing here rendering that form partial and now it's available to both new and edit so we go in and back to articles we'll take one two three four five six seven There we go. Eight is the one that's completely blank. So if I were to try to update it now, you can see we still get the got no longer blank this card article has content now and we go back to articles you can see that no longer blank has replaced our our empty article that we had new should still work you can see that the form is displaying After refactoring and you can see that that worked so we'll take a look at, back at the guide the only other thing we had to finish up was the um, the a link to the edit page from the show page so we'll add that in we'll similar to what we did before to the when we added the new article to the index we'll add that selector test and the title the content of that is just going to be edit This will now fail. And then we can implement it. In show. should be we're back to passing we can take a look now at show we can see that there's now the ability to edit this and there we go the one last thing I want to do here is take a look at this article's controller test. So we now have some uh, some opportunity to refactor out some repeated code. We'll move these local variables into the setup. the 
occurrences. Those can be eliminated. Make these partials, or not part instance variables. should all be converted. Test should still be passing. Oh, but they are not. Undefined article title. There and there. Now we found them all. And then there is an opportunity. Let's see if I can do this. Method called form error assertions, taking an article as a parameter. And see. This will work. Make sure I get there. Just do it in edit. That seems to work. Let me just make sure that we make it all the way there. Yes, we did make it there, and that refactoring works so we can do the same thing in new article but we're doing it with instead of the instance variable article we're doing the local article I guess we don't that actually doesn't have That's not used. Should be hit twice. Should still have 64 assertions. And we do take out the put statement. And then this is the one where we need an article. So we've got. And this is where we will take these 
items here. And since we're only ever using article dot last there, we can just do saved article assertions. article dot last and then it should do this with article we should still have 64 assertions and they should still all be passing and they are all right, I'll take a quick look at other opportunities to refactor. I don't think we get enough lift out of just those two. That's more overhead than it's worth. I think we'll stop there. Close all our saved items. Take a look at our status. So we've added in edit and then the form partial. So edit and update actions added in, new replaced with the render partial show add the link to edit refactor out the some of the stuff in articles controller test and I think we're good Pause and write the commit message. All right, so we've got our commit message. We will save that. Push to the remote. And we'll get destructive in our next video. Want to create your own Ruby gem but don't know where to start? Code along with me on the end-to-end -end journey of the Nerd Dice project. We'll configure and publish the gem use GitHub Actions to trigger builds and tests, and create magic methods with Ruby metaprogramming that can roll any number of dice, all while using a test-driven approach. Go to statelesscode.com slash nerddicegem to level up. Thanks for watching this Stateless Code video. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and spread the word. Check out our growing library of videos on our social media channels, follow us at Stateless Code, and Taxation is Theft.